Caleb Williams, USC quarterback, becomes the first overall pick of the Chicago Bears. With that selection that the Bears got last year when they traded out of the top spot with the Panthers, little did the Panthers know that they would be the worst team in football in 2023, allowing the Bears to vault to number one again. Unlike last year, they didn't trade the pick. They're making the pick. They've made the pick. It's Caleb Williams. And it's potentially the first franchise quarterback that the Chicago Bears have had since Sid Luckman. Now, they might have it with Caleb Williams. And they're going to need it when you look around the division. Jordan Love in Green Bay, what the Lions are building, what the Vikings hope to do. The Bears have the potential to become a player in the NFC North and in the NFC. If Caleb Williams delivers on his potential, they will be. As of a week ago, it didn't look like a sure thing that Jaden Daniels would be the second overall pick in the 2024 draft, but now he is. And it was moving in that direction. It got a little strange. It looked like maybe him or Drake May, or maybe they would even trade the pick to a team like the Raiders or the Vikings. At the end of the day, the commanders stand firm. They do the right thing. Chris Sims had been saying for weeks, run to the podium with the name on the card. Jaden Daniels, second overall pick. Heisman Trophy winner, one of the most important draft picks the Commanders have made in decades, at a minimum since Robert Griffin III in 2012 when they traded up. This time, they stayed put. They got their guy. And now the challenge is going to be for head coach Dan Quinn and offensive coordinator Cliff Kingsbury taking Jaden Daniels and turning him into a high-end NFL-caliber talent. The Patriots stay put, and they draft their latest potential replacement for Tom Brady. They tried it with Mac Jones. Three years ago, he was the 15th overall pick in the 2021 draft. That didn't work out, if you hadn't noticed. Now, they hope it works with Drake May. A new day, a new dawn for a New England franchise that took the 199th pick in 2000, not even 20 anything, just 2000. That's how long ago it's been. Turned him into one of the greats of all time. Now, 196 spots earlier, they're going all in with Drake May. Highest they've taken a quarterback since Drew Bledsoe, who predates Robert Kraft as owner of the team. He bought the team in 94. Highest they've ever taken a quarterback under Kraft. We'll see if it works out. And it's going to be a lot of pressure on May, not just being the third overall pick, but whatever that best offer was. And maybe we'll find out what the best offer was from the Giants or the Vikings. That's what the Patriots could have had instead. A team that has a lot of holes to fill. They decided to go all in, all eggs in the basket, Drake May goes to New England, and we see what happens moving forward. So far, the first four picks in the 2024 draft have gone as expected. Caleb Williams, not a surprise at all. Jaden Daniels, number two in recent days, not a surprise either. Drake May at number three, that was becoming more and more clear. And now, one of the ones that we've been sure about for a while, the Cardinals at four, taking Marvin Harrison Jr., the receiver from Ohio State, who had been regarded for a very long time, is the best receiver in this class, even though guys like Chris Sims saying maybe LSU's Malik Neighbors, a better pro prospect, maybe Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU, also a better pro prospect. The Cardinals playing it safe. The Cardinals getting a franchise-level receiver. 20 years since they drafted Larry Fitzgerald, who became an eventual Hall of Famer in Arizona. They get a guy who has a Hall of Fame pedigree, his dad, Marvin Harrison, Great with the Colts to the point where the Colts were actually thinking about trying to make a move up from 15 to four to get Marvin Harrison Jr. If they tried, it wasn't nearly enough to get it done because the Cardinals stay put. They take Marvin Harrison Jr. They give Kyler Murray a weapon in the hopes of making the Cardinals relevant again in the NFC West. He's going to have to uproot his life and go to L.A. taking on a Chargers Chiefs rivalry that maybe he would have preferred to be on the other side of he's got an adjustment to make his career is going to start in LA with Jim Harbaugh and the Chargers as they try to beef up an offensive line that needs to protect Justin Herbert as much as it can and on that point one of the little nuggets that Shefty dropped just before the Chargers made their pick Chargers got some calls about quarterback Justin Herbert which is really no surprise when you consider the fact that Jim Harbaugh was touting his Michigan quarterback, J.J. McCarthy, maybe, maybe Harbaugh would have been willing to take McCarthy and trade Justin Herbert. But the other thing that Harbaugh said at the time he got the job, he viewed Justin Herbert as a rock star. They are not letting him go. He is a potential shortlist franchise quarterback. He just needs help around him. Got a big piece tonight in Joe Walt, a very large, very competent tackle 
who will help make things better in L.A. It's time for the Giants to pick. Receiver Malik Neighbors from LSU becomes a selection. They desperately need playmakers on that offense. You look at the depth chart. Who do they have? Now they have Malik Neighbors, the guy that Chris Sims had at number one in this year's receiver class, above even Marvin Harrison Jr., who went two picks earlier. And I got a little something more to tell you here, something I picked up, because I've got tentacles everywhere. I've got connections. I'm hearing things. And you know what I heard? And I'm surprised by this, but I trust my source. At number five, the Chargers, when they took Joe All, they passed on an opportunity to trade out of that spot. The team that wanted to move up to that spot, I'm told, the Minnesota Vikings, and not to take J.J. McCarthy. The Vikings, I'm told, were trying to move up to number five to get Malik Neighbors. What does that tell you about the Vikings and J.J. Jefferson? Or Justin Jefferson, as the case may be. I'm getting my J.J.'s mixed up because the Vikings very well may be taking J.J. McCarthy at number 11, just coming up in a few picks. But Vikings tried to get to number five, apparently not to get McCarthy, but to get Malik Neighbors. What an offense that would have been. They still would have needed a quarterback. They may get that quarterback in a few picks. For now, though, the Giants get a much-needed receiver who can help elevate their skill positions and make that offense better and make Daniel Jones or Drew Locke or whoever the quarterback eventually is in New York better than he otherwise would have been. And the Titans do the thing that many expected they would do, addressing the offensive line, picking up J.C. Latham, the tackle from Alabama, a guy that some thought was even better potentially than Joe Alt, who went a couple of spots higher. So... The Titans trying to build from the inside out, not the outside in. It's a smart way to go for a team that seems to have plenty of work cut out for itself to become a high-level contender. Not that long ago, they were the number one seed in the AFC. They've got a new coach. They got a new GM last year. They're trying to put the foundation in place for a team that can contend. And just like Jim Harbaugh said back at the league meetings, offensive line, very critical to a team's overall success. They get overlooked. They get disregarded. When they do their jobs well, we don't notice because we're paying attention to the quarterback and the running backs and the receivers and the tight end. You got to have that foundation in place. That's what the Titans are trying to do. They pick up J.C. Latham in an effort to get that done. Well, 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 the Atlanta Falcons, just six weeks after signing Kirk Cousins in free agency, have acquired their successor eventually to Cousins. Michael Penix Jr., the eighth overall pick in the draft. Remember, they did their homework on Penix. And I've mentioned the possibility of the Falcons taking Penix because why would you waste your time doing work on a guy that you're not going to take? They don't screw around. They're not wasting their time. They're going to have a transition from Cousins to Penix. Cousins has a deal that pays out $45 million per year, $100 million guaranteed over the first three years. But the first two years are 90. Maybe they could trade him after two years. I know he's got a no trade clause, but... But who knows how the world is going to unfold over the next couple of years. The bottom line is they have cousins and they have a hell of an insurance policy in Penix. One of the great receivers in the 2024 NFL draft and one of our favorites. We interviewed him a couple of times. Roma Dunze from Washington becomes the ninth overall pick in the NFL draft of the Chicago Bears. Teamed up with Caleb Williams. Now you could look at it and say, well, they already have DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen's been around forever, frankly, and he's in the last year of his contract. They need someone for the future, and that someone is going to be Roma Dunes, a hard worker, a guy who gets it superstar potential. The Bears, forget about 1985. They are flipping it around. This is going to be a team with a very good offense moving forward now that they have both Caleb Williams and Roma Dunes in the top 10 of the 2024 draft. The Texans, a month or so ago, we thought they would package that with number 11 to move up high in round one. At the end of the day, they moved up. One spot. Why would they move up one spot? Because they wanted to make sure nobody else who coveted J.J. McCarthy could cut the line in front of them. The Vikings do the trade with the Jets, the flip-flop, and the Vikings get in position to take McCarthy with the 10th overall pick. The highest the Vikings have ever taken a quarterback in their history. They've only had four first-round quarterbacks. The highest was Dante Culpepper in 1999. Now they take McCarthy with number 10. The Michigan quarterback who won a championship with the Wolverines try to be the guy to get the Vikings to their first Super Bowl since 1976 and maybe their first Super Bowl ever. But this win ever, this is what the Vikings were looking for. A franchise quarterback, their first since Fran Tarkenton, and a guy who can take them not just to the playoffs, not just to the divisional round, 
but a guy who can punch them through to the Super Bowl for the first time in a very long time. We'll see if it happens. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.